and girls, Emma again, welcome back to Spare Room. As normal with a project, I get in and start it and then think, well, maybe I should have made a video. So we're starting in the middle here a bit. I've got this little dividing accessory for probably a grinder or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, it's quite a, quite a well-made thing. Um, It's got a little spindle on here, and it's had a chuck at some point, which was a bit rough and a bit ugly, and I'm not really sure whether I'm ever going to use this again. So the beauty of this is it does fit my mill, and it's, got, it's nicely made here, and it'll bolt on nice and square. It's got angle adjustment here that's nice and accurate, and it's got angle adjustment this way with the bolt in the centre. I've sourced a couple of gears and they're on the way, uh, worm set. I've 3D printed them off the drawings from the website just to start with, just to, to mock this up. Uh, this is module 1.5. Uh, the gears are made by KHK in Japan and they're on the way. I've had a bit of a look at the GH Thomas divide, Universal Dividing Head and that's a, a really nice looking thing and there's a couple of really good looks at that on the, on the internet and on YouTube if you have a look for it. It's a little bit big for my mill, as is anything. Uh, this is the right size for my mill, this is Sherline. And this would work nicely with some sort of dividing apparatus. The Sherline CNC dividing apparatus, which is what they sell, is out of my price range really. It is fairly expensive. Um, and this is really good, the chuck goes on it. You can't put a collet on it. Probably I could get a collet chuck to go on it, the ER 32 or a 25 or something. Uh, it needs an angle plate of some sort. So, as far as cutting gears, it's not really what we need. Something that I could put these little chucks that I've made will set up on or the Lorch collets would be really great with a drawbar. Shouldn't be a big deal. Let's start with this. We've got a little tail stock. Uh, we've got all the bits here. We've got some idea of what the gear should look like. And we've got sort of a spindle. I've ordered a piece of 4140 to make another spindle, which is going to be to match this. Uh, we'll set it up between centers and machine the spindle with the place for the thread on the outside, which is a couple of projects down the track, but we can do that. And then the hole on the inside to take this with a short drawbar. So that's the idea. It goes through there. However, we need somewhere to lock a collar. And if we have a look at this. If we put this through here and this on here nicely. This spindle needs to be a bit longer and this gear needs to go on here like that. But there still needs to be a place on this here to lock a collar with a bolt hole in it so that we can make a swinging piece to sit this on. So this, this casing could do with being 10 millimeters longer. And what I've done is just set that up on the expanding mandrel. We'll set the expanding mandrel up nice in the four jaw so that it runs pretty true. And I've bored that out to inch and eight. And I'm gonna make a cast iron piece to go in there that sticks out 12 millimeters. And it's bored the same as the same as that in there. And 
We'll lock tight that in there nicely. Good and firm and solid. And then we can make a piece to go on here with a locking screw. That's got a, a hole in here for a, a hinge piece to, to hinge the, the shaft that works the worm wheel. I don't know if I've got any of the terminology right with that, but uh, that's where we're going with it. So, next thing is to chuck up a bit of cast iron. I've got a piece of grey cast iron there that'll do the job nicely. Machine it to fit in there, the right length. Bore it out to 7 8. So the 7 8's a nice slip fit in there. Part it off, lock tight it in, and we fix that. So, let's get in and do it. So I guess it's in order to measure this, and this is a not one to two inch micrometer, but it's a really good question. It's more than right. Um, it's got a bit of patina on it, and I've never really used it a lot, but just checking that on my one inch Starrett Weber gauge block, it's right on, so we're gonna live with that. Really impressed, actually. It's just a good idea to check it before I use it because I actually make things bigger than one inch diameter that require a micrometer about once every three years. So we'll check this. It looks like I failed miserably because that's one inch 152 thou. I'll just check that again. 1 inch 152 thou. So if we made the other piece the same size so that it's a good slip fit in here or a good push fit, um, we might put a bit of 608 Loctite round there to hold it in place. It needs to stick out 12 millimetres there and that'll give us enough for a piece of 12 millimetre aluminium plate to teardrop shape come out here and lock with a screw probably on top. Um, or underneath maybe we'll think about that but this diameter will be good enough and we can just bore the, the other piece out to match so let's make this piece of cast iron to that size and we're working with a metric lathe here but I don't have a 25 to 50 mil micrometer this one inch 175 179 thou so 19, 0.154 up there. 0.05 of a millimetre, that's about one division on here. pretty jolly close. We're about 151 which is probably good Loctite fit clearance. It's a pretty good fit on there. We're not going to shrink it in but we'll certainly I think that'll be alright. So next job, bore it out to 7 8.
This boring bar was made by Steve Barton at Solid Rock Machine Tool. Go and check out their YouTube channel and their Instagram, etc, etc, etc. And even better, buy one because they're a fantastic boring bar. And this is only in a bit of soft cast iron, but it's working pretty hard. just going to hone that last half a fowl or something out there rather than try and cut it. And that's just my thoughts. Let's have a look at it over on the bench. So there we go. This piece is in, it's nice and concentric. I'm really pleased with that. Um, this fits nicely, it's the wrong way around, of course, but it fits in there beautifully. Um, I think it bears just as well on the outside here as it does on this end. This, of course, will go on here like this, and there'll be a collar on here, a teardrop shaped collar with a screw hole in it uh, to lock this arm with the... basically the worm wheel, which sits down on there like that and moves this. I'll make this through with 4140 and a 7.8 and then a bit bigger on the outside and then 25 millimeters. It's going to be mixes up, mixed up threads all the way through and I apologize for that in advance. 25 millimeters with the, the taper in here for this so that this sits on here like this nicely. That's the idea. And eventually when we've got thread cutting equipment and put a thread on it, and we could probably put our little three jaw on here or faceplate or center dog or something like that. So at this point, I'd be happy just running collets in it, like so, or either of these chucks would be really nice. So that's, that's where we're at with that. And we should be able to do all sorts of things, tapers and, and all sorts of things. Anyway, that's what I've started and I think I need to get this done before I get onto the thread cutting attachment. There's bits still coming for the thread cutting attachment. It could be some little time away. There's bits still coming for this that won't be quite as far away, I don't think. Hopefully these gears are here pretty quick. But the next project I think for this is probably to make this collar on here. Whether I'll get onto that this week, I'm not sure. A bit of 12mm aluminium with a hole in it and a slit in it and 
some nice shape on the outside will, will do the job beautifully. So that's it from me tonight. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for being patient with me. There's, there's a million things to do. There always is. And there's a thousand projects going on in my head that I've had planned for quite some time. So this is just one of them. And I think to move forward, it's the next thing we need. So more soon, guys and girls, and be kind to each other.